In a previous video, we began looking at the manual digitizing tools and we covered the first two groups of tools. I'm Lindy Goodall and in this video, we'll use the second group of tools and do something a little more realistic by starting to reproduce this design. We're most often working from artwork, so let's go grab some. I'll create a new blank document. Then we'll go to Insert Artwork. And I'm going to back up a bit and I'm going to choose Artwork for Manual Digitizing. This artwork comes with Hatch, so you'll be able to do the same thing. Let's use the butterflies. Before we go any farther, let's make a distinction between these two buttons. This button inserts an embroidery design into the current design, while this button inserts artwork. You need to select the right button to see the right files. I'm going to lock my artwork by pressing K on the keyboard. That way I won't accidentally move it. It's kind of protected that way. The next three tools are the ones I use most for digitizing. And if you talk to most digitizers, you'll find that it's pretty much the same for them as well. These tools work with left and right mouse clicks to define the object. So let's just see how they work. When I click on Digitize Open Shape, remember that this is a line tool, I can left and right mouse click. So if I left click, that creates straight points. If I right click, I'll start with a left click, and then I'll right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, and right click. See how I have this nice curve? If you make a mistake, I haven't applied any stitches yet, you can back up by pressing the backspace key. Once you're happy with it, just press enter and stitches are applied. To change our stitches, I'm going to press O on the keyboard to activate the select tool, and then I can click on the object I want. And I can apply different stitch effects. If you watched the other video, you saw me do this. Now normally we use lines or open shapes for thin objects. So let's delete those. And I'm going to zoom in on these antenna. As we think about digitizing, we want to digitize out, do this little oval thing, and then come back. So let's do that. I'll click the digitize open shape. I'm going to start with a left click. Then I'll do some right clicks and I'll stop right there with a the left click. And there I have a run. Now remember, we learned how to use the circle and oval tool, so I'm going to use that because this looks like a pretty perfect little oval guy here. And I forgot to check my fill type, but I can change that. I'll select my shape, change it to a fill, and make sure it's a satin. We don't want to end up out here and have to jump, so I'm going to take this object, and in the Digitize Toolbox, I'll click Backtrack. And what that does is it repeats that object, but it reverses the stitch direction. Now what it also does is it puts it right after that original object. So we want to move that down. And I can change that to a back stitch. And that's how I would do the antenna. So I'm going to press minus a couple times to zoom back out. Now we need to create some closed shapes because our wings are closed shapes. And this also works with left and right mouse clicks. So I usually like to start with a left mouse click. We'll start right there with a left and then right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, 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 right. And if I put one down where I didn't like it, I am just going to press the delete key and back up. And continue right clicking and left click. Now remember, I started up here, but I don't need to click up there. I just can press enter at this point and it connects it automatically. Let's turn off true view. I'll press T on the keyboard. And we can see where I got a little bit out of shape. In fact, let's zoom in. I'll press B on the keyboard and I'll zoom in. And did I get it perfect? No. But you know what? This is a pretty freeform butterfly and nobody 
is looking at the artwork and your design. So you don't have to have it perfect, you just have to have it looking nice. I'm going to actually fix that and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll press O. Now it's going to select the last object, but if it didn't, I have the select key activated and I could click on it. And then I'll press H and that activates the reshape key. And now I can just kind of go right click there, add another node, and I can move it into place. And I can adjust my nodes as I feel necessary. So don't get too anal about this. It's your interpretation. I'll zoom back out. I'll press zero so we can see the whole design. And then we can see our shape. Before we move on, let me point out a few more things about reshaping. I'll select the object, go back into reshaping, press H, and we can just see those nodes that I was adjusting. The little round circles that are turquoise, these are your right clicks. So they're your curve points. Whereas these little yellow squares that you see are your corner points. We can switch between the two by clicking on it to select it and pressing the space bar. And now that's a straight one. And that's straight and that's straight. If I turn on true view, you can see that it's somewhat jagged there. So I'm going to do control Z to undo those. This line is our angle line. So that determines the angle of our stitches. Now one more tip. When you're tracing shapes, you want to put the fewest number of nodes or points necessary because not only will that make a smoother shape, it will be much easier to edit. To exit out of the reshape tool, just press escape. Now fill is an appropriate stitch type for this wing because it's quite large. If I select it, we can see what it would look like with satin. And that's kind of peculiar looking to me. So I'll go back to tatami. But that's just rather flat. We can get creative. And so let's try adding a radial fill. So I'll go to the Effects tab, click on Radial Fill. I want to press H to go into Reshape. And there's a little dot here. And if I move it out, this is the center point from where all those stitches are radiating. And I don't want it to radiate from this side. I want it to radiate from this side, so my stitches are kind of going out at an angle like that. So what I need to do is just move this to this other side, and that's how it looks. Now I'm not too worried about this part here, because we have these shapes that we're going to put over that. Let's digitize another closed shape. So I'm going to toggle off True View by pressing T on the keyboard, press B on the keyboard to zoom in, and we're going to do this blue shape right here. So make sure digitize closed shape is selected, fill is selected, I'm going to have a tatami, and I'll just start creating it. I'll start with a left click, do some right clicks to work my way around these curves, left click in the corner, and some more right clicks, and then a left click and enter. There's my shape. Now, unfortunately, this shape is sitting right on top of that other big fill, and this is not good. So what we can do here is I'll make sure I have that shape selected. Then I'll go to my Edit Objects toolbox, and I'll choose Remove Overlaps. And now I have a nice neat hole cut out underneath my top shape, so I won't have too much stitching. It puts a nice little overlap here so we don't have any gaps, assuming that you are hooping and stabilizing properly. So I would continue building the wings in this manner. Press B on the keyboard. We'll zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Click on the Digitize Toolbox. And this time, I'm going to use Digitize Blocks. And let me create one, and then I'll show you how this tool works. This tool works with pairs, so I'm going to do some right clicks. And it works by placing pairs of points on either side of the object, and these lines represent the angles. So I'll press Enter, and there's my shape. Now let's zoom out, and I'll show you some tricks with this tool. We'll zoom over to a free space over here. When you use the Digitize Blocks tool, you're most likely using it with a satin 
and you want to have this set to fill. And what you're doing is you're defining either side of your shape. Works with right and left clicks. So if I do left clicks, we can see that I have some odd little angles going on in here. And if I mess up, I can just backspace again. Press enter when you're ready. There's your satin. If I turn on true view, you can see my satin. I can also do curves and just do your right clicks. You can make some nice scallops by doing left clicks and then right clicks. Just because you have a left click on one side doesn't mean you have to have a left click on the other. So you could have left, 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 right, left, 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 right, and left, left. This tool does take a little practice. Just take your time and get familiar with it. I'm going to delete those. We'll go back to our butterfly. I'll press zero on the keyboard. And so I would add our spots. And now that one came in as a tatami, so I'll just change that to a satin. So I would use that to create all my dots. Now remember how we created this void underneath by removing overlaps? I would not remove overlaps on these dots. These dots are fairly small. The reason for removing overlaps is to reduce stitch count and to reduce bulk. When you have a satin stitch that goes from side to side, you're not ha creating a lot of stiffness from all the needle penetrations that you would have from this. So I wouldn't worry about that, it's pretty small anyway. Let me show you how I would do this body. So we'll zoom in, B on the keyboard, drag a selection, T to see our artwork, get out of true view, select our digitize blocks tool, make sure we have fill selected. We're gonna use a satin, start at the top, to pair of left clicks, do some right clicks to get a curve, left to get his neck, right to get his body, left to get the end of his body, and some more points down here to shape his tail. And press enter. Turn on tree view, and there's his body. Now it's your turn. You know how to finish this design. And I suggest you practice on this. This is a pretty easy design. You can practice removing overlaps, practice using the digitize blocks tool, using the digitize closed shapes, digitize open shapes, and reshaping, and applying stitch effects. As you work with the different stitch effects, you'll find some work better on larger shapes than they would on a smaller one. Also, don't get too carried away with too many stitch effects because it just looks tacky. Once again, here's the design I created. We'll zoom in. And you can see that it's pretty simple. I used radial fills on the wings. I have some rotating satins around here that you can create with, with the digitized blocks tool. So I used a lot of digitized blocks tool in here. So pick a design and go play. But remember, you need to stitch out some of your pieces. It's not really an embroidery design until you sew it. And you really won't know how well you're progressing unless you see the sewn version.